In today's video, I am going to be taking you to one of my favorite antique flea markets. It's in London, England, and it's called Old Spitalfields. This is a daily market in London, but you've got to make sure that you go on Thursday because Thursday is the day that all of the vintage and antique dealers show up and bring all the goodies. That'd be really cute for a gift for my niece for her dollhouse. 38 pounds. I love, love, love these numbers. They remind me of growing up at the cemetery. My dad had all the numbers and letters for headstones. <laughs> oh, this is pretty. What's this? It's got a cross on it. I think that is a Egyptian cross, maybe? It's really neat. The detail's gorgeous on this. I like this. So I'm gonna get both of them, the little one and the large one, for 10 pounds total. What is it? Made in England. That's beautiful. I love the color. 15. 15. I'm gonna grab that. Get it. Get it, Nancy. Oh, the lamp. That's a really good lamp. I like this snake bracelet too. Genuine buffalo horn. Interesting. It's kind of neat. There's just quite a few of them too. 10 pounds each. Interesting. Yeah, they're made out of horn. There's quite a few options. I think I'm gonna get maybe two of those. He said 65 on this deer. It's a brutalist sculpture and it's by an Italian designer, Harvey Crisoni. Crisoni. Prezioni. I don't know how to say it, but it's an Italian designer and he said 65 on it, but I've got him down to 55. So I think I'm going to go ahead and get him. I think he's wonderful. Nancy warned me I'm going to fall in love with things in this space and she is not wrong. Look at these little owls. Those are great. Oh my goodness. Okay, we're gonna pause the video for just a second because I wanted to tell you why I picked up this. I wanted to see if it was the very popular and valuable pepper mills by Jens Kriska. These pepper mills are highly sought after and I'm not familiar with this exact design, but if you see one of these incredible pepper mills, make sure you at least check and see if it is Dansk. And I'm gonna put a link to a book that will help you identify these in the description below. Okay, resume shopping. So much good stuff in this space. We have only been here at the market for I don't know, 20 minutes. And I've already made, I think, five purchases. <laughs> oh, I think this is a Walter Bossy. I'm pretty sure it is from Austria. Nope, I see an England stamp on the bottom. All right, we've got to pause this video again because one, it is pronounced Walter Bossy with almost a V sound at the beginning of Walter. And I am so confused as to why it is stamped England because it does look just like the Walter Bosse items that were made in Austria and later in Germany. When I was doing research on this hand, I found an awesome article that explains the history of this company and some of the drama that it went through. If you are like me and you want to dig even deeper into the history, I have linked that in the description below. But I'm not gonna lie, I'm still confused as to why it was stamped England. So if you know the answer to that, please let me know in the comments below. Resume shopping. 55. Pro tip, if you are shopping the spaces here at Old Spitalfield, sometimes you can actually get on the backside to shop because when things start to get busy, it's really hard to get inside the small stalls. So sometimes I will kind of scan from the backside and see if I want to wait to get in. It's not too bad right now because the market just opened but in another hour or so, you're gonna have to wait to get into the stalls. So I like to do a little scoping on the backside. We spotted some incredible pottery from far away. Look at the size of this, it's massive. I 
I love that they took the time to display everything so beautifully too. They didn't just throw it out. Little hedgehog, he's cute. He's the piggy bank. This is an all white heel. They put him in all different colors. Oh, I've seen these before. Yeah. That's a pretty color though. I haven't seen the purple one. Oh, look at, look at these. like a tramp art chair. I've never seen that. You guys remember my picture frame and my box that I got recently? What is it? Just yard trimming. Trimming. Do you sew? I do. Oh goodness, that would be a great. Oh my gosh, you look how much you could sew, Nancy. Like you could do a whole dress out of it. On the side of a curtain panel. Oh, that'd be beautiful. Yes. I like that. Ooh, look at this. I saw that. Wow. Yeah. What's that say on there? It's quite an old one. That's a neat one. Very pretty. How much for this? 20. 20. So I'm going to do the necklace. It's stamped Paris and it's $20. And then this sterling bracelet is 35. Not dollars, pounds. <laughs> 50 for both. it work you put your cigar in here and then you and then you just clip the end out. and you clip it and it's from the 1800s 1700s? 18th, 18th century so it'd be the 1700s how much was it 20. we're in love with this painting it's got the little church with the bell tower and signs the colors in it are amazing the frame looks newer so i'm not sure how old it is but that is a really beautiful painting. Yeah, I can't find the artist's name. Really? But you're very welcome to take it into a different light. If he has one thing like it. Sort of you kind of see it. Yeah. It's beautiful. How old do you think it is? I think it's, I'm gonna put, I would say in the 60s. Okay. But then you don't know if he was inspired. It could be any, sort of in the eight, 50s to 80s. Yeah. Would be my, you know, if you're going broad. If it were mine, I would think it was the 60s. It's really beautiful. It is, it's, yeah. Colors in there. I love. That's what we were saying. Black outlines. Oh, that's so sweet of you. this chair it's like a throne it's got mirrors on it brass detailed birds that's incredible How much is this one? Uh, 50. 50? It's quite old. How so old do you think it is? It's a, it could be 19th century or early 20th, but it is a, a proper etching. It's not a, It's not like a copy, it's an original etching. It's probably around 1900. It's really well done in impressionist style, and that name of the artist. I purchased this massive Mexican sterling necklace for 80 pounds. I had to get it because I'd never come across one like this before. It ended up selling on my online website for 195 US dollars. Definitely worth Worth the purchase. It's very old. 1850s, 1900. Really? Yeah. It's really pretty. Yeah, old, yeah. How much is this one? That one is 120. 120? This is turquoise. All these are real stones. They're all real gemstones. And that, we put a fly as well, like dragonflies. Not for sure, but probably the best chai in London. <laughs> Awesome place for snacks. If you're looking for food, there are food stalls all throughout Old Spitalfields. You get this beautiful copper piece for 20 pounds. Thank you so much. Thank you. Enjoy. Thank you.
Camden Passage is one of my favorite places to go to in London for vintage jewelry. I love picking up vintage jewelry when I'm traveling because it is so easy to carry back in your luggage. And Europe is a lot older than we are in the US, so you are way more likely to come across items that are much older. I picked up some really wonderful finds at Camden Market and I'll show you them at the end of the video. Capital letters up on a rack above you and you'd have the letters you used a lot, the, lit, the small letters down where you could easily reach them uh, at hand level and that's why we have upper and lower case. Upper and lower the case. Capitals were in the upper case. Upper and lower. And the, How funny. And the Steve, you are full of knowledge. I love it. In the lower case. But I never know if you're pulling my leg or no, not. I'm serious. <laughs> No, that actually makes a lot of sense. So were these used in newspaper prints? Well, these like were probably manufactured for Oxford design, but you would have had the same kind of small uh, lead lettering would have been for, um, for composited blocks for newspapers. But well, these, uh, these are graphic blocks. I have to get this one. Look what it is. It's a Hamza hand. These are uh, graphic blocks. Eight. Pound. That's neat. These are really neat. I'm gonna get this one for decor. You do? Yeah. Ah, I love it. We'll be twinsies. I like this angry chicken. He looks so mad. It looks like a wood block print. got this beautiful piece of Kaiser uh, porcelain for only 35 pounds. Very excited about that. It was hard to pick, but that was the one I picked. I ended up getting the Scandinavian looking copper art for only 10 pounds, which I felt like was an incredible deal. This was a really hard one for me to sell, but I ended up putting it in my online shop and I sold it for this amount. This is why I love going to this type of vintage market, something that's even a little bit more curated, because even if they have a ton of vintage that is high priced at full retail, if you know what you're looking for, you can always find something for an incredible deal. Everybody on the group trip found something to bring home with them and my my favorite thing that I found probably has to be the Egyptian necklace. Whenever you see the words Paris stamped on jewelry, that's always going to be a good sign. Whenever I see Paris or Italy on a vintage costume piece of jewelry, I always get it because I know there's going to be some good value there, especially if it's beautiful and clearly well made. I have been selling vintage full time for 12 years now, and as much as I have learned over the last decade and beyond, I still learn new things every single day. And that is why you've got to get out there. You've got to hit these flea markets. You've got to hit antique stores, not just thrift stores where you're going to find the best deals, because in order to know what you need to be looking for at the thrift stores, got to know what holds value and follow those gut instincts. If you see something and you've never seen it before, and it looks like it's really well made, and especially if it is signed Paris, pick it up. You know it's gonna be worth at least the 20 pounds that you paid for it. In this case, it paid off big time for me. I have not brought myself to list this necklace in my shop yet. I just love it so much and every time I look at it or wear it, it reminds me of this trip. Let me know in the comments below what you think I should do. Do you think that this is worth just too much to hang on to? I would love to know what you would do in this scenario. Would you let it go just because of the value or would you hold on to it for a little bit before you let it go? Personally, I tend to like to wear things at least a few times before I let them go. It's part of the exciting part about being a vintage dealer. I was so excited for Nancy when she found that beautiful painting. I have a little story that's going to be coming up about this painting in the Norway episode, which is going to be coming out pretty soon. So don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss when that video comes out. The painting is beautiful and I'm so happy for Nancy that she found it. This day picking, I found some really wonderful jewelry. I found a pair of carnelian and sterling silver bohemian giant dangle earrings, and the pricing at Old Spitalfields and Camden Passage was really reasonable. Typically, when I'm buying jewelry for resale, I make sure that I have at least 50% margin because taking photos, listing it, shipping it, promoting it, paying for your website and all your shipping supplies costs money too. 
So you've got to make sure you've got the margins there when you are looking at investing in vintage. And if you are just starting out in jewelry and you don't have a large audience, so it's not a guaranteed sale when you buy something, I highly recommend picking up pieces that are very odd or different. Those tend to be the first things to sell and the things that I can get the most money for. So something like the Cobra necklace that was a handmade artisan pendant, that's a really smart investment because somebody that loves Cobras is gonna see it and they're gonna have to have it because they know they can't find it again or on their own. I find animals or really unique patterns, bright colors, those are the things that are gonna sell. Again, you've gotta trust your gut and your instinct. If it makes you go, oh, when you see it there, that's a good sign because it might do that to somebody else when you list it on your website. I also picked up a beautiful Art Deco necklace necklace and I will pop in a picture of what I sold it for right here. I'm pretty sure that I paid 40 pounds for this necklace. Again, always look for those margins and don't be scared to spend a little bit of money if you know what the item is actually worth. These earrings are one of my favorite finds I've ever found. I am so sorry I am not selling these stunning earrings. I actually had to test them out to make sure that they were not too heavy and that they didn't hurt my ears, which they didn't. There are so many different beautiful colored stones and everything is so intricately cut and perfectly set. These are signed sterling on the back. They do not have the artist's signature. I did a little bit of research. I'm quite sure that they are Native American crafted, but I haven't been able to figure out who the artist is on them yet. But I will not give up, I will keep doing research. So if any of you have any pointers in the right direction, please let me know in the comments below. I had my hands full when I found this amazing brooch. So I didn't film a clip of me finding it. This is by David Anderson and it is a Norwegian brooch out of sterling silver. Isn't it amazing? I purchased this from the same vendor that I got the earrings from and I love it so much that when I went to Norway, I might have gotten it tattooed on my arm. <laughs> One of my favorite jewelry items that I found has to be the cross pendant necklace with the matching pendants that I turned into earrings. This was another one that was really hard for me not to keep, but I did list them in my online vintage shop and they did sell for a very good profit. Part of what makes traveling internationally and going to these flea markets so exciting is that you're gonna find older things or things that were never imported into the United States. You're gonna come across a lot of things that you just don't see every day in the States. And if you are looking to learn, this is such an incredible way for you to get out there and see other things and broaden that knowledge. Also, one tip, if you are new to vintage reselling and you don't have a high amount of money to invest, and this tip you can do whether you're shopping at a thrift store or shopping at a flea market in the States, or if you are shopping abroad in London and that is to take lots of pictures. You don't have to buy everything that you think looks interesting, but take a quick picture of it because then you can do more research on that item when you get home. I will warn you, sometimes you're gonna kick yourself because you're gonna find out something like that Egyptian necklace for 20 pounds was actually worth about 700 US dollars, but it's a great way to start learning even if you don't have the money to invest in inventory. The Italian Brutalist Deer ended up in my Christmas decor this year. I thought it was a really wonderful wonderful sculpture. It has just enough of that abstract brutalist style that I love without being too abstract and too obscure. It's pretty obvious that it is a deer. That one's going to go into my personal collection for the foreseeable future, but you never know because like most vintage resellers, I hold on to things for a little bit, enjoy them, and then I pass them off into their new home for a new life. Funny story about the first time I ever went to Old Spitalfields. It was on my first trip to London in 2022, and we had a flight that got in at six o'clock in the morning to London and I don't sleep on airplanes so I had not slept in a really long time. I knew Old Spitalfields Market opened that Thursday at 8 a.m. with all the vintage so we literally went straight to the Airbnb, dropped off our luggage, and walked 45 minutes to the market and made it just in time for opening. If you want to see that video from my first trip to Old Spitalfields, I will link it up here and also in the description below. One of my favorite things I purchased that day was Syrian enamel containers. They were little, they were small, I knew what they were when I saw them and I still to this day have my q-tips and hair ties in them on my vanity where I get ready every morning. 
this is why I love decorating my home with secondhand finds, especially things that I find on my exciting travels. Every morning when I get a Q-tip out of that little container, I think about that market. I think about that special trip with my nieces, my sister, and my husband to London. So I highly encourage you when you travel to bring home souvenirs that are antique and vintage and something you're actually going to use on a daily basis. My dream is to have my house full and surrounded with things from all of my travels so that instead of just having these videos and pictures of my experiences, I'm going to be reliving those experiences every day and being grateful for those opportunities. I have had so many requests to put out a video on how I pack these treasures and bring them home. So I wanted to let you know at the very end of this series, I'm not only going to be doing a full haul showing you everything that I found on my European adventures, but I'm also going to be sharing with you how I prepare for these trips, how I pack these items when I'm there and I get them home safely without spending extra money shipping. So make sure that you are subscribed so you don't miss when that episode comes out. Thank you so much for joining me in today's episode in London. Here is a sneak peek at what is coming up in the next episode.